So there's a void. Christian morality is failing. Mm -hmm. uh, but his proposition, I think, ultimately is to will to power, to so, become the Ubermensch, right? So how do you fill this void? You become the Ubermensch. So without God, the world is chaos, right? Right. The world is, in a sense, it is meaningless. It's, it's, it's kind of a nihilistic vision, right? There is no, as we've said, fundamental ground to all of reality. But what is what is the response to that? Is, is the response despair and like, oh, life is meaningless? For Nietzsche, actually, paradoxically, no. Paradoxically, he's like, okay, despite the fact that the world is chaos and that it seems meaningless, that means that the meaning of your life has to be to exert your own will, right? To create yourself. And this is what we call the will to power, right? Mm -hmm. um, this, is his, this is really, for Nietzsche, what life is all about. It is the will to power. Okay, so let's just redefine will to power here, lest we lose our, listen, lose our listeners, and I lose myself. <laughs> Not Eminem, lose yourself. Lose but, yourself. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, no, but on the music, but Nietzsche, <laughs> it's a different song. He hasn't, he hasn't released it yet. It'll come out later. So the will to power is to enhance, kind of channel yourself in such a way that you're able to grow, right? Um, it's something that's good for us. There's this void. And so we need to claim what's rightfully ours, which is growth. And we all have this desire, right? And Nietzsche, Nietzsche recognizes that we all have a desire to grow and to, to have personal development, right? And the way that we exert that best is by claiming it. Yeah, so this is a great quote from him about the will to power, right? So now we don't decide what's good and evil based on what God tells us mm -hmm. or, about, or according to Christian morality. Now this is what he says. He says, what is good? Everything that heightens the feeling of power in man, the will to power, power itself. What is bad? Everything that is born of weakness. What is happiness? The feeling that power is growing, that resistance is overcome. Not contentedness, but more power. Not peace, but war. Not virtue, but fitness. So you can see here how this is, how this is standing in contrast to the Christian morality, <laughs> right. rather than saying, serve the lowly, deny yourself, be poor, be obedient. He's saying, be powerful, exert wage yourself. war, be fit, assert yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Be confident, claim your rightful power to growth. But this sets up a dynamic that I think can be violent. Yeah. Namely that here, the primacy is not on the intellect, mm -hmm. how it is in the Christian tradition. Here, the primacy is on the will. Yeah. And herein lies, I think, one of the great dangers with holding this idea. So let's 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 talk about this real quick. So this break it down for us, Joe. This this contrast between intellect and will, right? In the Christian understanding, okay, God is infinitely wise, mm -hmm. and then because of that, He chooses out of His wisdom and goodness to create, right? Yeah. So to human beings, according to the Christian understanding, we we understand what is good first. The intellect is primary. Mm -hmm. And then once the intellect proposes to us something that is good, we desire it. And then we go after it. So then our will acts. Nietzsche is like, okay, there is no primordial order. The universe didn't come forth from any wisdom. Mm. So what acts first, what should act first in human life is not the intellect by which we grasp some sort of pre-given order. It's the will. We just assert ourselves. We just, we create the order. Right. We impose order upon the chaos. We, we impose ourselves against the void that is reality. By whatever means necessary. By whatever means necessary. Yeah. So I, my will, am primary. And life, finding meaning in this chaos is all about, like we said, asserting myself, exerting myself, grasping at as much power as possible. Can I ask you a question, Joe? Yeah. Do you think this is relevant at all in today's time? I don't know. I don't think I've ever really seen it, to be honest <laughs> with you. No, I'm thinking about it. Um, okay, so here's an example. So this is, practically speaking for our listeners, we said that Nietzsche is influential today, right? Big that's, time. that's your question. So maybe you're like, okay, what are these guys talking about? Well, maybe you, Max, or some of our listeners have observed within the world today political discourse. What? <laughs> Maybe you've watched like a presidential debate mm. or even just seen people on social media attempting to engage in conversation about political issues. And it's typically pretty chill. It's super chill. And super rational. Civil. 
Uh, yeah, nice people to each other. No, it's because people have imbibed this Nietzschean ideal that finding meaning in life is not about thinking and into like engaging intellectually in the arguments that someone is presenting me. It's in it's in asserting my will. It's not in approaching somebody in charity. No, and in love. It's, it's a, trying to destroy the other. Exactly. It's in confidence and aggressive assertion of the self. Which is why we see people, I think, one of the reasons, this is at the root of one of the reasons why we see people today in the political world not having real discussions, not having real conversations, but just yelling at each other, mm. shouting at each other, trying to, I don't know, want, give one-liners that turn into sound bites that just like dismiss the other person's position altogether. We are very much a culture that is... Um, we have an emphasis on our own wills rather than on the intellect first. And I, I think another way that you see this manifest is in our exertion over nature via technology. Yeah, that's right? a great point. We try to build computers and all kinds of things. Computers, I don't think, are the other things. I think like missiles, right, or weapons of destruction. Just to prove to others that we're capable of truly going the extra mile and imposing who we are, which is the person who has power right here, right now. That's a great point. I think about the arms race, mm. right? The nuclear arms race that's going, I mean, yeah. just people aren't making more nuclear weapons that can destroy the world three times over if just because they think it's going to make the world a better place. They're doing it to be more powerful than the other guy. To be sure, you know? And so, I'm sure there's some defense rationale there too. Mm-hmm. We're trying to defend against other powers. All the, all the while though, it is the exertion of the will. Yeah, so this is the Nietzschean will to power making itself known today. And I think another and maybe the most obvious and sad reason that uh, or way that we see this manifesting itself today is in gender ideology mm. or as one of our professors calls it, gender theology because it is something they worship. But this, what is, I mean, the, at the basis of gender ideology, it's this premise that I don't actually have to think about what I've been given my intellect and like receiving and accepting reality for what it is does not actually condition my will. Instead, I can just choose what I am. Right. Biology doesn't tell me anything. Yeah. My parents can't tell me anything. My friends or doctors can't tell me anything. I choose for myself who I am. Which is, I think, a direct consequence of Nietzschean thought, right? Right.